in the last slide. So going by that procedure, it turns out that the system finds that the second split is best at an income of about 85. Okay, so all the cases greater than or equal to 85 are here on this particular node and all the cases less than 85 uh, are here. Less than or equal to 85 are here, greater than 85 are here. We can see that this creates one pure node and one almost pure node. Now, continuing in this fashion, after you do all the splits, the diagram actually looks like this, right? So we saw the first split here, the second split here, possibly the third split here, the fourth split uh, there, and so on and so on. Okay, and the process continues. And if you really look at it, here all the cases are pure. If you look at every single rectangular region, it has either all non-owners or all, all non-owners here, all owners here. Okay, so all the cases are completely pure. So we can see clearly that Corresponding to every split we chose, we can draw the tree part of it. So the first split was at 19. So all the cases less than or equal to 19 are here. All the cases greater than 19 are here. This was on 19 of lot size. The split was on lot size of 19. Okay. And then the subsequent splits were here. Okay. So this is the split value, 19. And this is the, the variable or the attribute on which the split was performed. And this shows you the number of cases on either node which resulted from the split. After three splits, the tree looks like this. Okay, so here, this was one split. The second split was at 84.75, and the third split was 57.15 or vice versa. This is a complete tree after all the splits were performed. Okay, and of course, we can do the corresponding equivalence with respect to our original diagram. And because every split results in one line being drawn on a given region, so this is after all the splits were performed. Okay, so here we could try to see, okay, here we've got a node, leaf node. Which region does it correspond to? This says the lot size is less than or equal to 19. So we are talking about this this lower half of the diagram and then it says the income is greater than or equal to 87.5 which is this is income 87 point. so this is the region that we are now talking about that corresponds to this node similarly if you look at this node here this says lot size less than or equal to 19 income less than or equal to 87.5 lot size less than equal to 18. Okay, so we saw that lot size less than equal to 19 is this lower half. Then income less than equal to 84.5 is this left part. And then lot size less than equal to 18 is this part. Okay, so this is the region that we are talking about for this. So you can clearly, clearly see that Given the tree, it translates into this series of partitions on the original uh, set of nodes. Of course, we can do this only because there are only two dimensions and we can visualize it. If we have more than two dimensions, if you have more than uh, you know two predictor attributes, then we cannot visualize it in quite the same way. So just for practice, you might want to take a look at these four leaf nodes and identify the corresponding regions on the original diagram, on this diagram. Okay, you can work through these and uh, it would be a good idea for you to stop the video and look at each of these uh, leaf nodes that we have marked as one, two, three, and four and identify the corresponding regions on the diagram here. Okay, so stop, pause the video, take a look at it, identify the regions and then you can continue the video and check if your answers were correct. Okay, so if you can verify that these are the four regions that correspond to these leaf nodes. Okay, so if you want 100% purity or 
you know, what happens is that you end up doing what is called overfitting, right? In other words, if you're trying to match every single nuance of the training data, right, then you might end up doing what is called as overfitting. By overfitting, we mean you're essentially completely going by the training data. Now, it's quite possible that the training data may have some freak cases, you know, some anomalous occurrences. If you want to get 100% accuracy, you try to explain with your model every single anomalous occurrence. Okay, that is called overfitting. So what really happens is this diagram kind of shows you what's going on. So you have an error rate, okay? And as you increase the number of splits in the training partition, the error rate on the training partition keeps on going down. Okay, you keep having a bigger and bigger and bigger tree, it'll end up classifying more and more cases correctly. The error rate on the training partition goes down, but if you look at unseen data, or data in the validation part or the, the test partition, then up to a point as the number of splits increases, the error rate goes down. But beyond a point, the error rate on the test partition starts to go up. Okay, why? That is because if you draw to a bigger tree, the tree is representing all the quirky things that are happening in the training partition. And those are quirky things. They are freak occurrences and they will not occur in normal data. So when real data is looked at, which is in the test partition, then your method doesn't perform well. Okay, so in general, a big tree is likely to overfit the training partition and perform poorly on uh, the test partition and therefore on real life data. So what we try to do is we try to eliminate the splits that do not reduce the error rate very much. Okay, sometimes what happens is you get splits that create very small groups, right? For example, here, you've got a split uh, on 19.8 of lot size. It creates two cases, uh, this one is better. It creates two cases in one case. Okay, so that's a very small thing. So you might be able to combine them and not perform the split at all, right? Consider this itself as a leaf node and eliminate that split. Same thing here, same thing here. So you'll get a somewhat smaller tree. Okay, so bad split, you can eliminate this and simply combine it as non-owner, right? Because in this case, there are two non-owners and one owner. So if you combine them, you'll get a node with two non-owners and one owner and be classified as a non-owner based on majority. Okay, so that's an example of how you might prune a tree and take its size back down a little bit so that it doesn't overfit overfit and produce poor results okay so this the, the general way in which this classification tree approach works is it does recursive partitioning builds the complete tree and then it prunes it using the test data that's how it works it goes through a pruning process Okay, so here we take a brief look at the pruning approach. We already saw this chart that uh, as you increase the size of the tree, you get a reduction in the error rate on the training partition, but on unseen data or the test partition, the error rate starts going up beyond a point. Okay, so obviously you want to choose the size of tree which corresponds to this optimal point which gives you the lowest error rate on the test data. So you generate best trees of each size and then select the tree with the minimum error rate on the test data. I'm saying validation, but it's the test data that we use to validate our model. Uh, this is all we'll discuss about the technique of the method itself. All of this is implemented when you simply use the R function to build trees. Okay, so all of this thing that I gave you was simply background information about how the method actually works under the hood. Now, rules are useful because they are very transparent, easy to explain, and very easy to understand. Advantages, as we've already said, easy to use and interpret. Variable selection is automatic, meaning you don't have to eliminate attributes and so on. 
if some attributes are not performing well, they're not useful, then the tree method will simply ignore them. Okay, so you may have data with 100 predicted attributes. You don't have to worry about, oh, I've got to reduce the attributes to a meaningful number. No, the tree will take care of it. So that's very good. It's non-parametric in the sense that we don't have to rely on any specific statistical parameters. And missing data doesn't seriously affect the method. So these are all very solid advantages. Okay, disadvantages, as we've already seen, it only considers certain types of splits, completely horizontal, completely vertical splits. And obviously, because of the fact that the process works in sequential fashion, we are not getting the possible best tree possible. We're just getting a good tree. 